in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Let's lift our hands together from nation to nation, region to region, our studio family, Koinonia Global, the body of Christ, honor the name of the Lord, even at such a time as this. The Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, to declare his praise in the morning. Father, we honor you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not his benefits. Can you thank him for his faithfulness? Thank him for his mercies. They endure forever. Together as a family of faith, let us lift up the name of Jesus. He has shown us grace. He has shown us mercy. hallelujah praise the name of the lord thank you so much for all who are connecting from all across the globe and to our global family thank you our studio family the lord bless you in the name of jesus you'll be a brief time of sharing of impartation of prayer and of learning and the lord will grant us grace in jesus name and then i thank you for celebrating me my goodness my god is being humbling and amazing the things that people have done from all across the world. Thank you. Thank you. I am the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown mercy. That's my testimony. That I am the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Lift your hands and sing and say, I am the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Lord, I am the one. Say, I am the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. One more time, lift your voice, lift your hands. I am the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, your goodness, your love. Thank you for the privilege and the honor first to be called your own. The Bible says, what manner, behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us in that we have now been called the sons of God. He has made us sons. He says, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Thank you for the privilege and the mercy that you have shown us the gift of Jesus to our lives. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of serving your purposes even in our generation. I thank you. And I pray that as I speak to your people from nation to nation, Europe, Asia, America, Africa, I pray that your word will come with power 
grant us understanding and let Jesus as always be glorified in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you please thank you thank you be seated I I have made it um, a point of duty to always share a few things that would be a blessing to the body of Christ as a way of celebrating my birthday it's an honor to be alive we live in very terrible and dangerous times and if you ever find yourself you must take it as a privilege and an honor whilst I prayed preparing just to receive a word from the Lord on that which I would share the Lord put four very strong things in my heart that I would like to run very quickly four very important truths praise the name of the Lord now we rise in this kingdom through knowledge and we rise in this kingdom through revelation and um, I want to encourage every single one please pay attention you're in your home your office wherever please minimize movement minimize whatever you have to do just leave whatever you are doing and pay attention pay attention the Lord Jesus is about to speak pay attention the first thing the Lord would have me charge our hearts over this afternoon is concerning our love and our passion for the Lord Jesus Matthew 22 and verse 37 our love and our passion for Jesus it is true like the songwriter would say that Jesus is the answer for the world today we live in times of turbulence times of affliction times of discouragement of all sorts ranging from region to region and we need to reintroduce Jesus to a dying world we need to reintroduce to a world that has so neglected Jesus we need to let the world know that passion for Jesus pays in this life and in the life after Matthew 22 and verse 37 here's what it says Jesus said unto them thou shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart your soul and with all your mind you have to love Jesus with all your heart all your soul and all your mind your mind must participate in that love relationship your soul must participate in that love relationship your heart must participate in that love relationship it is one thing to work for God it is one thing to serve in the house of God but it's another thing entirely to love Jesus there are many people who are not passionately in love with Jesus and he's reminding us again of the value not just of church you can love church you can love preaching you can love sermons you can love christian activities you can even love heaven you can love the throne room but none of these is jesus it is not the throne we worship it is him that sits on the throne hallelujah and so this is a call to number one pay attention to our relationship with jesus I did a teaching I think a few months ago called uh, maybe a few months or about a year or so ago three most important things very powerful teaching please search for that teaching and listen to it from the depth of your heart with all your heart and I thought that three things are most important in any man's life number one the first of them in order of priority is your relationship with Jesus lose everything in your life but if you have Jesus you have everything people have lost money people have sadly lost loved ones in in the wake of the pandemic people have lost businesses they have lost means of livelihood sadly but then if you have Jesus he is that one friend that sticks closer than a brother he is the anchor hallelujah but you have everything we live in an arrogant world today where some trust in horses 
and others in chariots, some education, some business, some trust in money, political connections, etc. The Bible tells us that the name of the Lord, listen carefully, only the name of the Lord is qualified to be called a strong tower. No military might, no military arsenal is sufficient to stand the evil of the times. Our military, as wonderful as they are, globally speaking, can only resist physical enemies. They do not have the power nor the intelligence to confront principalities, powers, and the spiritual wickedness that reside in heavenly places. It takes our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to be both saved and safe. Hallelujah. It's been my passion to the body of Christ for many years that we must be able to redefine our passion. We cannot generalize Jesus. We cannot throw him in the mix of church and religion and conferences and programs as wonderful as they are. Let this day be a call again to the body of Christ. We need to return to Jesus in our sermons, Jesus in our homes, Jesus in our hearts. More than well-meaning church activities, more than charity and philanthropy, more than all of the things that we do. If you do not have Jesus, it is true according to the authority of scripture that you do not have life. They say it in a very interesting way that no Jesus, no life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Mark chapter 12 and verse 32. Jesus was having a conversation with a scribe, one of the scribes. And the scribe made an interesting statement that Jesus had to comment on. Mark chapter 12 from verse 32. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God and there is none other but he. 33. And to love him with all the heart, listen carefully, and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than the whole bond offerings and sacrifices. Here is a scribe saying to love Jesus with your heart and with your understanding is more than everything, everything together. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? Please pay attention. The Lord is granting us grace to love Jesus with all your heart with every sense of passion is greater than achievements is greater than real estate greater than all sorts of businesses if all i have is jesus i've got something more than gold i will tell it to my world jesus is more than gold something more than gold I have something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something more than gold If all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold Once again we present Jesus to the world we may not claim to know everything about business. We may not claim to know everything about leadership. We may not claim to know everything about our sociology and civilization. But this one thing we know is that Jesus has been enthroned today and been made Lord. And, and for as long as we live, we will present him to our world as the only way, not one of the ways. This is based on... On the authority of scripture the bible presents jesus to the world as the way the truth and the life it says no man comes to the father except by him there are ways there are formulas but the bible tells us that when it has to do with the matter of eternity and destiny jesus is the way the truth and the life for those who are lost we present you Jesus, the Savior, King, the 
of love and passion love and passion i'd like you to pray in one minute and cry for the grace and the passion to love jesus more than anything go ahead and pray more than anything more than anything you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are everything hallelujah there's a wonderful and powerful song we sing in this side of god's kingdom says Yeshua Hamashiach You have everything, everything, everything My life, my intellect Lift your hands, lift your voices song says everything that I have and all that I am is yours how true how powerful everything you have my everything anoint my everything use my everything take all of me all of me you have my everything Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, all of me. All of me. You have my everything. Listen. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take my everything. I release my everything, say, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. You shall love the Lord Jesus with all your heart, all your soul. Listen, let me tell you at the end of your life truly nothing else matters not the jobs not the homes not the houses not the certificates not the accolades those things only find their value in this life there is only one thing you can take out of this realm jesus and your relationship with him hallelujah this is my first message again to the body of christ and this will be my core message until the day that I see his face. Mm. All my days on earth, I will await. Listen carefully. The moment that I see you face to face. For nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. 
Redeemer of my past and present wrong The holder of my future days to come So who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Yes, the powerful confession. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. He's the cup that doesn't run dry. He's the fountain of living water. Listen, the Lord is speaking to you. You're yet to make this decision for Jesus. As you watch this preacher, this one who has been shown mercy, here is the Lord speaking through my voice. Come to Jesus. Win that war. Win that war of destiny. Run to Jesus. And you who is already in Christ, this is a, a call to be established. To love Jesus more than church. To love Jesus more than ministry. To love Jesus more than career. To love Jesus more than man of God, woman of God. More than money, more than fame, more than titles. None of these things compare. Jesus above. Jesus ever. Jesus only. Praise the name of the Lord. Very quickly, my second message to the body of Christ is... To contend for effective living. It's been a burden in my heart. The apostolic ministry allows you the privilege of capturing and sharing the burden that is in the heart of the spirit per season, per time. And there is a higher call for effective living. What does that mean? Living with intention and living with a purpose there are so many people including christians well-meaning believers who spend their lives just allowing time to define what to do with their lives and destiny psalm 90 verse 12 we'll look at three scriptures very quickly psalm 90 and verse 12 a call to effective living a call to living a life of purpose to live a life with intention. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days. The word number our days does not mean to count the days. To be aware that you will not always have them. A sense of awareness is what cultures you into living effectively. As you know, I had the great privilege to be mentored by this lifetime mentor who i honor in life and in death dr miles munro and one of the things that he brought to the body of christ is a sense of purpose and a sense of effective living this call is especially to my generation of people there is a lot of visionless living men who just live and allow status quo to define what their lives should be it ought not to be so this is a call to live with intention. It's a call to live with purpose. Hebrews chapter 10, please. And verse 11. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 11. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. I beg your pardon. Verse 7. Hebrews 10 and verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come. The Bible says, in the volume of the book, as it is written of me, not to freelance my life throughout my lifetime, but to do your will, O oh God. Lo, I come. We just finished a powerful series on witnesses, a two-part series. Please do well to access these teachings and listen to it. That everyone lives today. Respectfully speaking, many in their old age are full of regrets and stories, counsels and advices that they have to give the generation of younger people. Why? Because they live their lives just allowing Kronos, the passage of time, to define their lives. It's time to 
stop living a visionless life and get back to purpose what is purpose it is god's expectation for my life i was so honored i still am you cannot imagine the amount of text messages without exaggeration i think it should be nothing less than maybe eight to nine thousand text messages so far from across the world emails and all of that I've, I've, i'm not sure i've even read up to uh, i just have a system in my phone that lets me know the amount of text messages it's i had to keep deleting and deleting and deleting just praying on the text messages and deleting from all across saying thank you that you were born thank you for your life i'm honored and privileged to be me but let me challenge you god never designed for just a few people to be superstars and trailblazers and history makers it is our corporate destiny in christ that the least of us would live an impactful life as you know long life is a blessing long life is a great desire but listen to me it is not how long you live that matters it is how effective jesus lived for 33 and a half years and the world is yet to recover from his impact I made up my mind that even if it's just a day I have left, I will serve his purposes and serve my generation with the gift and grace of God that he has so lavishly invested upon my life. You do not have to wait to be an Apostle Joshua Selman. Right from where you are, with what you have, you can start using your life, your gift to serve the purposes of God. Are we together? There is a call to live effectively second timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 please second timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 paul mentoring his son timothy he was getting to the end of his days and here's what he said i have fought a good fight there is a bad fight a fight that leads to destruction a fight that negates the project of kingdom come is a bad fight a wasted life pursuing money pursuing fame pursuing mundane things where kingdom come and the revelation of jesus is not connected to he says i have kept the faith i have fought a good fight so living is a fight living is a race we must run this race the bible says with perseverance looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith I want to challenge everyone from our studio family and those following online our global family you must make up your mind forget about what has happened in the past that from where you are and from now on i will live my life with purpose and intention buy books go for knowledge minimize wasting your life minimize careless and rash living jumping from pillar to post just trying to make ends meet in the flesh the bible says except the lord builds a house are we together he says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early the bible says and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep it is only god who can give a man meaning and purpose i think it's lamentations 3 27 if i'm not mistaken let's have it and see i hope that is a scripture it says it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth in any case you will bear that yoke but in your youth you have the advantage of strength and you have the advantage of time now is the time to make that spiritual investment now is the time to build now is not the time for premature manifestation let me talk to us some of us who believe that we have the call of god upon our lives and are waiting and hoping and trusting for our seasons of appearance we must trust god for grace to stay to build the discipline that makes for mastery we must learn the laws that make for success and learn it early success is time tagged there is a timing to success if you start early you will excel if you start late you may not have the time to maximize your destiny listen carefully the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to you have given a portion and a part of your destiny to and you must ensure that you're investing the gift of your time 
to the things that truly matter. There are many of us who have cheapened our times and our destinies. We can give our time to just anything, anything things that have no eternal value, things that have no transformational value. The second call this afternoon is a call to return to purpose, a call to return to effective living. Our world is full of depressed people today, respectfully speaking. Our world is full of frustrated people today, angry people, angry at themselves and angry at others, hurting themselves and hurting others. Why? Because you see, psychologists teach us that the key to fulfillment, among other factors, is progress. If you cannot measure progress in your life, you will be frustrated, and being frustrated, you will hurt others. We must contend for progress that comes by discovering and walking in the fullness of purpose. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, very quickly, and this is a very serious one that the Lord has put in my heart. It's a call for a greater sense of love and more importantly, unity in the body of Christ. God has called me to be an apostle to my generation. He's called me and given me that mandate my call is to the body of Christ and I have been concerned personally at the growing trend of hatred, the growing trend of disunity and divide that exists in the body. It's always been there, but it seems the margin is getting wider and there is a call to be aware of this and to make adjustments. We must love the body and we must love everyone who is part of the body regardless the individuals regardless denomination for a very long time it's been division along the divides of first religion and then denominations now we have all kinds of of pseudo christian doctrines that are not necessarily supported by the integrity of scripture that continue to divide the body of christ the third call is a strong burden this has been a burden in my heart and as i travel from region to region ministering by the spirit i have been burdened to call the body of christ back to a place of unity there is so much that we can do together there are dimensions of God we cannot capture and reveal to the world as individuals. The best of us can only be an effective member of the body. But then I thought to take it a step further to suggest and recommend by the authority of scripture and by the spirit three keys that I believe will help to sponsor the unity of the body. It is not enough to merely say the body be united to close the gap of the divide that continues to widen between us from denomination to denomination, from men of God and women of God to men of God and women of God, from Christian individuals to their brothers and sisters. But I prayed earnestly over this and the Lord gave me three keys three very powerful keys that would help to promote unity in the body and I want you to pay attention if you are a man of God especially please pay attention these are the keys that we will need by the Spirit of God to help achieve unity in the body number one the first key that will help to promote to sponsor to establish to maintain and to multiply unity in the body is a culture and a practice of honor as a value system we must reintroduce the culture of honor mutual honor let it become a value system in the body of christ if we want to see unity there never can be unity in the body of christ until we maintain as a spiritual value system the culture of honor 
for as long as we celebrate communicating dishonor to men and to women of God either in loyalty to mentors in loyalty to fathers in loyalty to denominations in loyalty to spiritual leaders we will only continue to widen this divide are we together Paul was speaking and he said there is one Lord there is one faith there is one baptism for a very long time we've had a promotion and respectfully speaking even among us men of God subliminally we have mentored sons and daughters mentees and prodigies to find pride in downplaying and demeaning other ministries other men and women of God who are not part of our local assemblies or local spiritual families is a dangerous communication that must change are we together my fear right now is for the younger generation who are looking up to us and i speak more particularly to my generation of ministers in as much as god has helped us and shown us mercy we have been quick to criticize the fathers we have been quick to call them names we have been quick to see their scars we have been quick to make claims as though we have the stamina to do more than them gradually the stage is already clearing up for us and as we are standing on the stage it is it is it is almost a thing of shame that our limitations and our lack of preparedness as far as global spiritual leadership is becoming clear and obvious that the time we have taken criticizing people should be the same time we would have invested in the spirit to build stamina are we blessed the the resurgence of the spirit of pride the resurgence of arrogance boastfulness a partisan spiritual partisan spirit it is getting beyond control and it does not matter if the divide favors me listen we must not make the mistake that esther was about to make in the book of esther when you read her man was out to destroy all jews anybody jew was a victim of her man's plot but for the time being esther by reason of the immunity that the palace provided for her did not care about the plot and what was happening and mordecai gave a warning that must be a warning to our generation he says do not think paraphrasing that when they are done with us you will be saved just because you think there is an immunity it's always been my passion to raise people who look to god and love the body of Christ more than just unique expressions it is important we allow our unrenewedness and many times our complexes and sense of inferiority that can be solved through knowledge through competence and through knowing who we are in Christ we mix these things in ministry and we begin to create very sharp divides men of God this is a call from God we must be careful posterity will judge us if we raise sons and daughters we raise proteges and mentees that begin to insult the body of Christ it is no news that the body of Christ is like a bride that is growing we have to be careful the practice of honor listen our sense of honor must not just be to fathers and mentors senior colleagues in life and ministry or spiritually speaking the bible mandates that we honor all men that we honor all men first peter chapter 2 please and verse 17 first peter chapter 2 we must communicate honor to fathers and mentors in the faith first peter chapter 2 and verse 17 we must communicate honor and love and recognition to the fathers of faith can i tell you this a father does not have to be accurate necessarily in terms of flawlessness to deserve honor the status of being a father mandates that they have their honor in life and in death and then you must also honor your contemporaries many times we honor the father and dishonor our contemporaries 
And then many times we honor the fathers, we honor our contemporaries, but we disregard the younger ministers who are coming. There is a growing trend of disregarding younger ministers, mentees, prodigies. We were once like them, even as we remain sons to fathers. And so we must have the fortitude to help these people. They will make mistakes. They will do foolish things. One of the cross of fatherhood, true fatherhood, is the ability to take a lot of nonsense from sons while you allow them grow. Honor must be a culture and a value system that must be reintroduced to the body of Christ. Marketing of 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 um, making making a proposal that prides in limiting people, especially the fathers of faith. We must be careful. It's often said, "On easy lies the head that wears the crown." The average person does not know the kind of attacks and the onslaughts of darkness that attempt to to plague anyone who becomes a bearer of the cross and the name of Jesus Christ we must pray for the body and we must communicate honor are we together so the first key this is my proposal based on the, the integrity of scripture to the body of Christ to help us attain unity there must be a sense of mutual honor honor cannot be one-sided alone it can't just be from a son or a daughter to a father no, the son or the daughter is also God's creation and they deserve honor in their own regard. The fathers deserve their honor. Contemporaries deserve mutual honor one to another. Honor that is vocally expressed that matches the degree of honor they receive themselves. And then honor to our subordinates. This also extends to business people, those in office, Fathers today were one sons yesterday. Sons today will be fathers tomorrow. Children yesterday and babies yesterday will be sons. Or children today will be sons tomorrow and fathers the day after. We must practice a culture of honor. Honor that is beyond membership size. Honor that is beyond the level or quality of anointing. Honor that is beyond soundness in doctrine. In as much as all of these things provide an edge in themselves. But we must communicate honor that is a value system. Intended to help the body of Christ provide unity. You will hardly criticize somebody you truly celebrate. And you acknowledge the hand of God upon. Can I tell you this? Nobody who loves Jesus and names the name of Christ will in intentionally intentionally refuse to give his best as far as the building of the body is concerned it is true that we will observe mistakes it is true that we will observe faults there will be flaws in terms of doctrinal accuracy in terms of administration in terms of personal alignments we are different there's no confusion about that we are not at the same levels of the anointing. We are not at the same levels of doctrinal perceptions. We are not at the same levels of organization and results. This we must admit. However, in the midst of all of these things, we must obtain grace from God to look beyond it. I should be able to sponsor bosses for a crusade even though i do not necessarily know the man of god i can say look this is a contribution coming from a brother and a co-laborer may the lord bless that crusade it does not have to be by my assembly to receive my support are we blessed this is a very serious end time call to the body of christ for as long as we continue to celebrate individual successes. And let me give a word of caution with all due respect. To sons and daughters. We also are sons ourselves. But to sons and daughters. We must be careful. So that we do not in a bit to show loyalty. And honor to a mentor, a father. We do not begin to bring all kinds of negative constructions. Narratives that continue to plant enmity among men of god among christian leaders that must stop the the ministry of sons is to uphold the hands of fathers even as they uphold christ whilst they learn and grow not to be the sources of divides 
Is that true? First recommendation, the practice of mutual honor. And I can tell you there are many fathers in this nation, in Africa and across the globe, who even though they are men and women who God has helped with all of their status, their achievements, spiritually and otherwise, they have been able to stoop down and communicate lavish honor to sons. This man standing before you is one of the benefactors of that rare communication of honor that has come from fathers. And just as they have honored us, we must maintain the fortitude and the humility to be able to communicate the same to them, to our contemporaries. I have taught our global family, you belong to this global spiritual family. I have taught you again and again. We do not talk about men of God to destroy them. We challenge wrong doctrines. We help the body mature. But throwing down a man of God, insulting a man of God, tearing down a man of God, destroying his family is not an advocacy that represents our values. We love Jesus. We love the body. An imperfect body, yes sir. A body that is growing, yes sir. And this will remain our apostolic advocacy that if we desire to see kingdom come and we desire to see Nigeria and Africa present Jesus afresh to the world, it will not just come by our prowess in doctrines. Knowledge can be limited. But love and unity of the faith of the body that comes through mutual honor. Number two, the second key that can help to unite the body of Christ is understanding authority with jurisdiction. The second key, very quickly, is understanding authority with jurisdiction. I wish I had time to teach on this. This is just a broadcast. According to scripture, authority, the administration of authority is jurisdictional. You do not have authority when it has to do with functioning in the cosmos. You cannot legislate everywhere. If you are legislating as a kingdom ambassador, within that capacity, you have authority over creation. But when it has to do with human relations, there is jurisdiction to authority. I cannot go on the street and begin to discipline any child I see. He is not my child. If for any reason I think that child deserves discipline, there are law enforcement agents. It is this lack of jurisdiction to authority that continues to bring a divide in the body. Any man of God can stand and talk about anybody. There is a protocol and there is jurisdiction to administering authority. We must teach our sons, we must remind ourselves, and we must learn from the fathers. The jurisdictional component of authority. This is a spiritual family, Koinonia Global. And everyone within that fold, it is within my spiritual jurisdiction to correct, to rebuke, to admonish. Are we together now? But I do not have the right exclusively to jump into another man's ministry or jump into another man's business or jump into another man's family or jump into another man's political career and begin to veto authority. It's not done that way. There is a protocol. The Bible says when you come into a man's house, your first assignment is to knock and wait until the owner of the house receives you. If he does receive you, this is doctrine. If the owner of the house receives you, then let your peace rest upon him. But if he does not receive you, you do not have authority as far as that house is concerned. This lack of jurisdiction is what gives us a lot of spiritual pride to do a lot of things. A young boy, for instance, you imagine someone at my level of ministry, for instance, now beginning to talk about fathers of faith world over across Africa. By what authority? It is true that we are in Christ, but don't forget, that even the heaven you are talking about was built on the foundation of 12 apostles there is still order in heaven even though satan is not there the government system of heaven recognizes men there are rankings and there are authorities even in the practice of law there is what we call a jurisdictional component is that true there are times that issues around are beyond a jurisdiction and they will hand it over even in the practice of medicine, 
there are times that a doctor even though a professor he will admit that this is not my area of specialty and because of that let me hand it over to a consultant pediatrician a consultant gynecologist they excel because they understand jurisdiction the military use the same system a commanding officer in a particular theater or cantonment cannot get up and go just like that and begin to command a battalion without permission there is a ranking system this is true in the body as far as the body being an army and apostolic leadership is concerned we have to understand the jurisdictional component of authority authority is not without jurisdiction whilst jesus walked on earth did you read a place in scripture where he took somebody out of one city into another to pray for the person jesus himself honored the powers that be we have to be careful let's be careful as we speak about and against the powers that be political powers economic powers the bible says to submit to authority we have a right to observe leadership flaws we have a right to correct things that are within our jurisdiction but there is a protocol to administering authority we must submit ourselves and return to the doctrinal pattern of administering authority this is the second key to helping close that gap of divide in the body of christ the third very quickly is god helping us the third key that will promote unity in the body of Christ is called forbearance. We must practice forbearance. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Let me tell you what forbearance is. Forbearance is creating a psychological system of accommodation for the weaknesses, the limitations, the imperfections, the flaws in perspectives, as far as human relations is concerned is called forbearance forbearance is more than forgiveness forbearance means that limitation will happen again and again and again may god forbid it but assuming i'm an angry person you see that if you want to live with me you will not need to forgive me for anger because it will happen again so you have to create a system of accommodation that this is a weakness that will happen again and again this key will keep homes in peace this key will keep churches and members pastors and members in peace there is no perfect vessel anywhere no the key to receiving from men of god from business people from leaders both political and spiritual is to have the fortitude for forbearance forbearance do we have okay I thought we had the scripture projected we must practice forbearance it's more than forgiveness forbearance it will happen again and again again and again one time i was talking to i was counseling a very wonderful couple and um the man had done something against his wife and then they were together and i was talking with them and the man you know apologized to the wife and said i'm sorry and he said it will never happen again and i laughed i said hey, 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 hey let me step in it will happen again madam while this man is sorry and working on himself you will see many episodes of these kinds of things create a system of accommodation through revelation so that your joy is not tied to his transformation let his transformation be an added advantage not the basis of your joy forbearance as men of God, as leaders, we are different. Different in our understanding about life. There are some who are on the arrogant side. There are some who are on the shy side. There are some who are on, you know, insecure. There are some who are confident, even overconfident. There are all kinds of people. God has chosen to use us as weak and as frail as we are. We must forbear. There are people you don't have forbearance also means you don't have to agree with someone to work together. Even though the Bible says can two work together, it's speaking in the context of destiny. Do not fight people simply because you don't agree with their perspectives. There are many wonderful friends I have across the globe and we may not agree 100% in everything in terms of doctrine or approach to ministry. But that is not enough reason 
to be so antagonistic to one another. Listen, we must maintain that culture of forbearance. I have the privilege and the honor of preaching across different denominational divides. And it's been a culture I have trained myself to understand that every time I go to a ministry, I preach across denominations, I must have the flexibility and the adaptability to walk around their protocol of operations. Now, as Koinonia and as a man of God, I have my convictions, I have my modus operandi, I have a way I believe ministry should be done, I have a way I believe life should be lived. But I must sustain the, the faculty of accommodation. Are we together now? We must be careful. If the whole world is koinonia, we will never produce the will of God. Let me tell you, we can only be a, an effective dimension of God. If you want to see all of God, then it cannot be koinonia alone. There are many other ministries across this nation, across Africa, and across the globe that God is equally using mightily more superior in approach more superior in power more superior in doctrine our assignment is to be faithful within the jurisdiction of that which has been committed unto us to do it and serve god and serve this generation with our lives our all in life and in death this is our assignment so we have to be careful because this this doctrine of outshining this doctrine of demeaning is where we have this lack of forbearance. We are quick to observe mistakes. We go back respectfully speaking to our orthodox assemblies and we see our reverends, our fathers, veterans of the gospel, men who have served Jesus even before some of us were born. And we dare have the audacity to challenge them based on whatever factors we have put together. And we think just because we have people clapping for us while we are misleading ourselves, it does not mean we are making progress. We must return back to the spirit of forbearance. Regardless our limitations, Jesus is still in his church. And the bride of Christ is still the bride of Christ. Is God helping us? I have shared three keys among many others as a proposition all I have done is an attempt, a communication of my passion as a man of God to help bring the body of Christ to unity. Let me observe the following before we are done with this point. Unity does not mean uniformity. We will never do the same things. No, no, no. Unity does not mean the same approach. Unity does not mean the same level of accuracy. Unity means the same goal the same goal the same goal that even in our limitations it must be seen that our desire is for jesus to be lifted jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher that's our one goal jesus you be lifted higher Let our King be lifted up, O Listen to me. I look forward to times in this body of Christ where men of God can hold hands together and rejoice and celebrate regardless of who works miracles or who does not regardless of who has revelation and who does not i look forward to times where sons and daughters will have mutual respect one for another regardless of who has seen what who has had a vision who has who is a prophet who is an apostle regardless who is a millionaire who is a billionaire regardless who is Igbo, who is yoruba who is north a northern man, who is whatever it is and i believe that in my lifetime it is my prayer and my desire that we'll see a heightened sense of unity. And I pray that somehow the Lord will breathe upon this broadcast and send it by his angel like he has always done to homes, to ministries, to churches, to cathedrals as an attempt, a token, a contribution to help build the unity of the faith. Can I tell you this? We will differ 
in terms of our passion for God. We will differ in terms of our levels of hunger and pursuit. We will differ in terms of the time and the space we have given God to build us. Our covenants of alignment, our levels of press into spiritual things will create an obvious spiritual potential difference. But we must learn to look beyond our achievements. We must be able to hold hands and pray and hug one another. We must be able to stand upon the pulpit and preach Jesus, not tearing down one another. We must meet together with sons and daughters and lift up the name of Jesus and promote love and honor for the body. The reason why, respectfully speaking, the secular society has the audacity to now begin to look down and demean the church and to demean men and women of God is that there has been an allowance, a template has been created within the body itself that demeans itself any man who does not show his own house honor any woman who does not show her own house honor will have even neighbors and people around come and and look down on them let us restore the honor that comes with being a christian let us restore the honor that comes with lifted with lifting wounded soldiers let's restore the honor that, that the honor of priesthood that anybody who names the name of Christ sincerely with the intent to see Jesus lifted and to see Jesus glorified that sacrifice is deserving of our honor in life and in death can I tell you this this is a kingdom where you may be right but you will still not win we only win when Jesus is lifted are we blessed Take it higher for me. I want to sing this song very quickly. It says, Lord, make us instruments. You know that song? Of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments. Of your peace. The walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of peace so very quickly to attain unity in the body of christ among many other factors is number one and a very key one a recap now mutual honor mutual honor I pray for you. You pray for me. Hold on. I shouldn't pray for you alone. The song says, I pray for you and you pray for me also. I can't be praying for you alone. Uh -uh. Because I also need prayer. We're going to sing it one more time. I need you to. That's a very, that's a statement that takes a lot of humility. To admit in our arrogant world of emoji millionaire billionaire we act as though humans are not god's creation i pray for you you pray for me i love you i need you to survive i won't harm you with words from my mouth I need you to survive. It is His will that every need is supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Listen. Do not act as if we do not need business people we need them to fund the gospel we need politicians to bring policies that make for kingdom come yes we believe in divine health but we need doctors who continue to midwife our health while we are learning and growing in the school of the spirit we need apostles we need prophets don't tear down the prophetic ministry just because of imbalances here and there there are genuine men called and a territory that rejects his prophets and apostles will reject the roadmap for the future. We need evangelists. 
we need our stadiums full again of men and women who call upon the name of the Lord we need pastors who teach and raise and mentor and train and every one of these people regardless the capacity oh by the way we also need workers in church we need faithful workers ordained and not ordained as we call it we need workers no matter how anointed a man of god is you do not have those who lift your hands you will suffer as if god did not call you everyone who is a contributor to kingdom come deserves honor don't look down on your security man while appreciating your spiritual father that's a hypocrisy don't look forward don't appreciate the kingdom millionaire giving you millions and billions and looking down on your ushers the protocol and all the people sometimes i come for meetings and i am preparing for service i come and i find all these my wonderful people the sacrifices and the things that they do i never would be able to do that you're watching me from around the world there are brains who have sacrificed their lives their intelligence to make this happen how could we take all the glory and act as though we are the single exclusive factor in making christ lifted no there are many other people oh jesus it is true that you died but joseph of arimathea gave you his grave simon of cyrene helped you carry the cross don't forget the women and john who encourage you the bible captures all of them in the story because they deserve honor so even though he's king of kings but he does not downplay and demean everybody who played that role this is a call to us pastors leaders great people both in business and in ministry let us be very intentional about communicating honor let us stop some of those speakings that make it look like we can do with or without them no the only person we can do without or we cannot do without is jesus but then when it has to do with walking on earth and getting results we need men the lord gave the word great is the company of them that published it i'm doing a quick recap honor and then number two understanding the jurisdictional component of authority and then the spirit of forbearance oh i pray that that baptism will come upon the body of christ the spirit of forbearance forbearance create a system of accommodation for the limitations of people some things are not weaknesses they are just personality differences there are people who till jesus comes their vocal expression in the similitude of pride will remain so their personalities are like that they will not change there are others who are largely introverted and they look very simple and humble leave them the way they are that way if it is a character challenge we'll continue to contend for transformation but if it's a personality difference we must embrace it and trust god for grace that in the midst of it somehow jesus will be glorified and jesus will be lifted are we together praise the name of the lord so we've discussed three issues now very quickly number one is the love for jesus number two is effective living living with intention and living with purpose number three is bringing about love and unity in this precious body of christ now number four is my gratitude koinonia global thank you body of christ thank you america thank you europe thank you listen it's one thing to be called and anointed but it's another thing to have people receive you the bible says he came to his own and his own received him not it's possible to be genuine and yet not received by a territory so i thank you for receiving me i thank you for giving your best there are mothers that pray for me world over. 
there are individuals that pray for me world over i may never know some of you there are many of you who are the lifeline behind the exploits it is joshua selman that is seen but i'm wise enough to know that some of the results in my life are more than just my spiritual press is the intercession and the advocacy of nameless faceless hundreds thousands of people there are several ministries across this globe prayer groups who have spent days praying and fasting for me i may never have the opportunity to tell them thank you i may never have the opportunity to sit at table with them but i want you to know that this man you see who god has helped is grateful i am grateful thank you for your love thank you for your forbearance i want to appreciate very particularly our fathers of faith in this nation we thank you for your mentorship your leadership access to your platforms access to your churches thank you for your programs the conferences i want to say a very big thank you to our senior mentors our senior contemporaries or our senior uh, men of god in ministry and in business and in politics i had the honor and the privilege of spending a few hours with a greatly revered mentor yesterday and it was a life transforming moment two to three hours of imparting knowledge that has given me the course for the next say 10 to 20 years of my life it was isaac newton at the end of his life after he formulated the whole theory of his mechanics he made a statement and he said if i have seen further than others it is because i have stood on the back of giants our fathers and our mentors are these giants and let me say to our fathers that i know that you have been greatly dishonored by our generation of sons but there are still a remnant who understand honor we love you for who you are we celebrate you for what god is doing in your life we continue to follow you as you follow christ thank you for showing us your scars thank you for showing us your limitations thank you for being open and secured enough to lead us in the name of jesus let me say a big thank you to all of my contemporaries in ministry i have enjoyed unusual honor honor i cannot begin to mention names from europe to the u.s asia africa nigeria i have enjoyed profound support and prayer the good word the goodwill the sacrifices that contemporaries in ministries have made and continue to make co-laborers thank you i do not take your love for granted i am truly grateful now let me appreciate all those who look up to me and look up to a generation of leadership thank you for your forbearance thank you for your sacrifice we call you sons and daughters only because god has shown us mercy and in the name of jesus christ to every true son every true daughter every prodigy every mentee and every one who looks up to us for spiritual direction and by any means if you have found anything worth emulating in my life and in this ministry to koinonia global this precious family that i live for and i will die for as i serve the purposes of god accept my thanks for everything you have done you have made leadership spiritual leadership easy thank you in the name of jesus christ i want to more particularly celebrate the workers in this ministry thank you azaria family abuja family and by extension koinonia global there are many people who have been the instruments that have taken my teachings from nation to nation from region to region did you know that other ministries have sacrificed a portion a portion of their ministry to see to it that our teachings and what that deposit of christ that he has put reaches the nations how could we be so ungrateful thank you thank you to you thank you for all those who give you give and you support this work from across the globe i am amazed and even humbled at the passion to support the passion to stand by me as i lift up the name of jesus thank you all our prayer warriors 
listen i have i have a team of faceless prayer warriors but i have a team of others that i know you may never know them they are the annas in the temple these are the people behind the exploits that god is doing in and through my life and i want to thank you thank you everyone and my own commitment is that for as long as there is breath in my life we will preach jesus and we will see that he's lifted from nation to nation i have come to a point in my life like the apostle truly where for me to live is christ and if i die in this gospel it is gain let the name of the lord be praised let the name of the lord be glorified hallelujah now please listen you i i want i need to apologize finally before we pray i know that many of you <laughs> Uh, people keep asking me why i do not want to celebrate birthdays there are so many people who would have wanted to do all kinds of things all kinds of celebration i sincerely i sincerely apologize many times i'm in awe of the mercy of god upon my life that um, and then by my personality i'm quite a conservative person and i shy away from anything that has to do with spotlight and so on and so forth so please bear with me i do not i'm not abusing your passion to honor me i appreciate you especially to our abuja family here and i <laughs> praise the name of the lord thank you you celebrate me in your homes and let someone know jesus because of this day and you would have celebrated me let someone find purpose and destiny this day let someone be able to eat because this day came and you would have celebrated me but I want to thank you, thank you, thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you now, as my culture always is, world over, this is time to pray. Koinonia Global, and as many who believe in this grace, I want to speak over your life. Father, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, first to our studio family here, koinonia abuja koinonia zaria my precious people who i love with all my life and my heart koinonia global uk us africa asia in the name of jesus by the privilege of this grace and this gift that has been given to me to serve this generation with i declare be blessed in the name of jesus I declare that you love the Lord with such a renewed commitment, a renewed fire in the name of Jesus Christ. I agree with you on this day that everything that does not name the name of Christ, may it be far from your life. Shame and disappointment, let it be far from your life in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone watching, everyone following across the body of Christ and across the globe you are trusting God for all kinds of miracles miracles of healing miracles of deliverance miracles of restoration in the name of Jesus may this grace speak for you in the name of Jesus we bless the government of nations Africa the leadership in Africa we declare you are blessed the leadership in Nigeria we declare you are blessed our political leaders we speak wisdom over you wisdom to legislate wisdom to man the affairs of this nation in the name of Jesus such that we we go to our desired heaven I decree and declare in the name that is above all names all businessmen captains of industry the blessing is yours in the name of Jesus Christ father we pray for all those who labor in word and in doctrine men and women of god servants of the lord jesus christ who strive daily laboring through pain laboring through sacrifice to see that your name is lifted and to see that many come to the saving knowledge of jesus we speak the blessing over them in the name of jesus the christ of god and lord for this blessed family you have given me millions from across the globe who call upon the name of the lord and share as part of this spiritual tribe i stand by the privilege of this apostolic grace and the privilege of fatherhood i declare the blessing upon you 
you are blessed in the morning you are blessed in the evening blessed is your coming out and blessed is your going in i bless you with hunger for spiritual things i bless you with passion for jesus i bless you with wisdom and spiritual understanding i bless you with superior dimensions of the anointing may the mantle for honor never depart from your life i prophesy that you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus may shame and reproach be far from your life all those who are sick we declare be healed in the name of jesus the oppressed be delivered in the name of jesus the downcasted find hope in the name of jesus we pray for the backslidden come home jesus is calling jesus is calling come home to jesus in the name of jesus we declare unto you there is hope for a tree that at the scent of water indeed it will bud again we pray for ministries that have gone through pain ministries that have gone through setbacks find strength for the future in the name of jesus we pray for apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors scattered across this nation the continent of africa find strength for the next phase find strength for the seasons that are coming in the name of jesus christ and father i pray let there be unity in the body of christ lord grant us the maturity to drop aside petty prejudices differences achievements and take our eyes away from these things then to look unto jesus who remains the author and the finisher of our faith lord grant us the grace as spiritual leaders to live by the fear of the lord to live by conscience and to live with a sense of posterity let our children not find fault as they judge us let it be that whilst we came here and that you grant us the privilege of life and service let it be that we served you in truth and that we served you acceptably and father your people have honored me in ways that almost flatter me they have called me names that can only come by your mercy they have brought gifts they have sung praises i pray in the name of jesus let the world know again that joshua selman is nothing without you i am not ashamed to let the world know that you are the wisdom behind the exploits that we all celebrate you are the hand you are the anointing you are the grace behind anything good in the life of this man and lord whilst they lift your servant up grant grace oh god that will continue to lift you up even through our lifting find visibility through our lives in the name of jesus in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus name i pray please take it higher for me we're going to sing that song thine is the kingdom just two or three times and then we'll be done our global family please follow us it's become an anthem that says maranatha to come he is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty join us our global family for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom.
it be so, O God, that we continue to serve you. Let it be so, O God, that we remain a united family, one global family serving Jesus. Let it be so, O God, that the body of Christ begins to mature in this season. Let it be so that there is an avalanche of revelation upon your body. Let it be so that the love of Jesus permeates our society, reaching everyone, Christians, Muslims, non-Christians, regardless religious divide, regardless our sociological orientations. We present Jesus to our world and we declare Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you. Thank you. The Lord bless you and shalom to all of you in Jesus' name. Let me give us a big hand of praise. of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 